start again. Okay, so good morning, everybody. We're going to discuss, start with McDonald's. Is there a specific reason you want to go over McDonald's uh, this morning, Melissa? Um, because I saw some flags uh, uh, on, on the stock. At what time frame were you looking at? Uh, one day. Okay, so right now I see the 20 day support. It broke that 20 day support and then I touched the 50 and I see it's it continuing to go down. It opened up above, I mean, below this level of support, which is pre, uh, where is that right now in the pre-market. And I see it's still downtrending. So we're looking at about here, the end of these two weeks. Okay. Uh, you don't want to get to this area, but I see it's downtrending more than uptrending, even though it is really low on the RSI. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's been, a, it's been this low, low before. So that's what you want to be mindful of. And then as you see, it's continuing to fall. So you will want, you need a good level of support for it to start uh, recovering. Okay, so pretty much wait for a level of support. To yeah, because right now it's just, it's just continuing to fall. Okay. So it would be like in 20, it, in 227, around there. For the support? Yeah. You will want it more like on the bodies. Because right now it's at uh, 229.59. So, I mean, the lowest you want to drop is probably the shortest week out of all of these is probably where you want to keep it at. So uh -huh. about here, about 28. Uh, okay. around this area. If it mm -hmm. falls below here, you see it'll break the 50 day moving average below here. So, you know, you kind of want to stay up here and you, you, know, you, you know, you really don't want to use the weights, but there's nothing else to go off of when uh, our stock is downtrending like this. So, you know, it closed and the wig is down here. So all you're going to see is a continuation to go down. So that's kind of what you don't want. Mm hmm Thank you. Are you up? Let me go to. So BIDU, it had three dojis back to back to back, which is crazy. It's uh still trying to figure out what it's going it has going on. Uh, it moves with cryptocurrency, as you see, the R size has been super low. I usually do one around the 50 area just to, you know, I usually do uh, a horizontal line right here just to, you know, see how it's going. But as of now, it's just consolidating to the right. It's below all of the EMAs. So, you know, which is always, you know, a bad sign. You see the, the death cross, as they say, right here, which is the, the 50 and the 20 day crossing. So that's considered a death cross. So, you know, you, it, it looked like a flag was forming, but Doji's changed all that and it's just continuing to fall. So you don't have too much here either, but you know, you always want to get all the information you can. So you never know. So what does the death cross uh, mean again? So a death cross is when the 50 and the 200 day moving average cross each other. So it's like bearish? Well, if it was the birth cross, that would mean it's too good. But the death cross, it sounds like a bad thing. So definitely bearish. Okay. So it's basically saying over the last 200 days and the last 50 days, they're, they're moving about the same which it shouldn't do that, you know? It should be doing better, but it's, it's not. And it's just a, a continuation of crypto doing bad. So as you see here, zoom all the way out, it's a continuation. I mean, I could 
take this. You know? Yeah. Make sure they're all the way out here and just straight down, you know? And even this, like, you would thought it was a double bottom, but nothing. All resistance, resistance, drop. Resistance, resistance, drop. Resistance, resistance, drop. So it's continuing to, to fall. But if I was to, to jump in, it'd be around this area. Uh, I'll go to the top of this piece a little more. To about here. I, mean, I still mark it up just to have it because I know this is a, uh, one that really does really well. You know, crypto can reverse randomly. So I add it to the list. Today's the 21st. 21st. Okay, okay. Thank you. Six twenty one. So we'll do PID. And something that you always want to have on your list, as far as watch list, you always want to have Tesla, NVIDIA together. Do they usually move together? Mm -hmm. That is good to have on your watch list. Mm -hmm. Then we do uh, TRCH, which is another one that's doing really well. I think it's up two dollars after hours, and it was only like five dollars. So one eighty six, one eighty five. Then for the put, even though it's between the fall, I'll say about here. Down. Oh, 184, 43. Next one we're gonna do is go Alibaba. And I'm trying to get you out of this list out before the market opens. So I'm going to, you know, kind of like go through these pretty fast. But tonight we're going to go through options trading and cryptocurrency. Uh, we'll start with the beginner stuff and then move on to some more advanced stuff. Uh, like I said, for me so far, Tron case has been doing really well. I was able to take out 100% of my uh, investment. So I actually compounded some more into it. So, like I said, it's not financial advice. This is just something that I'm doing myself, but it but it's worked for me so far. Alibaba uh, is at two eleven seventy seventy one pre market. Uh, put this about here. That's a good entry. Let me see. Really about yeah, really up here. Let's go. Oh, all right, pretty safe. Let's go up here. So about two thirteen forty six. And all this stuff is going to be in the watch list section, so you don't have to write it down if you don't want to. I mean, you really don't have to. But I'm gonna write it for you anyway. And I always have the first uh, entry point and then their first target price. I always have everything together. This is the entry point for the put, and I leave all my charts marked up. Mm -hmm. And this is the first target price here, which is the wick, these wicks, and the bottom. I mean, the beginning of this this body right here, touching the body of the candle. I'll say for the, I'm gonna drop it a little bit more for the put option, just to give it the bottom, bottom out, bottom of here, bottom of here. Bottom of this wick, and that's about two ten eighty eight. Second, I'm gonna go through the list. Uh, we're going to go to TRCH. He's been doing really well. TRCH? Yeah. 
This has been doing really well. It's a uh, high on the RSI, but as you see, it's currently at 80 and it's gone up to at least 91. So it still has a lot more room to, you know, to go. And it's been printing small candles as of late. Uh, but since then, it's been doing really well. This doji, usually a reversal pattern. And then, you know, it's been doing really bullish ever since. So I'm going to add this to the list. This is the one I haven't marked up yet. But it's on the uh, on the, on the radar to mark up. So you really can't do you know, these wicks. Uh, probably get this body. This wick right here. Just to get some touches here. Eyes here. Eyes here. Also right here. What I see. Right here also. This is a channel that is, is in. You can also add another one here as a support. This is where it closed. You want that there. I think it's above this price pre market, so you really can't mark it up. I think it's like eight. Let me see what it is now. It is 8.47, so the chart hasn't even caught up with it right now. But this is definitely one I might get into today. It's uh, really cheap. Let me see the contracts. Uh, for July 16th, mm -hmm. for the $10 call, is $118. That's really, really, really low for, you know, something that's, that's moving right now. It's not, that's not bad at all. The $10 call for August 20th, is $185, which will give you a lot of room for it to grow. You know, obviously you want to open up the contract with the Greeks. The Greeks are pretty good also. The Delta is 0.55, the game is 0 0.05, so you make $60 every dollar go up. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but since the chart isn't caught up with it, I, I, can't, I can't mark it up. And I don't want to give a, a, a false charts. So we're going to go to fast break next. So fastly, it's right in this window. If you see it, do you, do you see, you, you see it, Melissa? What this is? Mm -hmm. Without marking it up. Uh, an ascending triangle, mm -hmm. or yeah, right away you see it. Mm -hmm. I forgot about Bisley. Yeah. You know, so that's that's always really good. You just want us to break out. So we have a sitting triangle right here and also a bullish pendant. See it coming down? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. You know, usually a bullish movement. So this is another good one. Uh, it's over. So I would say the top of these weeks is where I was trying to jump in. Typically, you don't want to use the weeks, but there's not too much information you're getting here. So uh, these are two touches. This is three touches. 5819. Add it to the list. And I might, I'm sorry, I might have you enough computer. Cause I can't have this thing keep messing up. See if I use like my AirPods or something. I don't know. Didn't you just get one? So it's just, yeah, I, got, I bought a microphone. I bought headphones for the computer. All that, and still, it's not like a robot. <laughs> it's your maybe it's your language, Kwame. 
I I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it's messed me up because I'm trying to, you know, do it on IG also. You know, IG started paying me, so I'm trying to, you know, get paid for that too. Might as well. And also, oh, yeah, well, since I'm talking about it, also IG started, uh, I'm, I'm eligible to, to get paid for the stuff that I post on IG and go live. So for every 15 minutes I go live, I can make $100. So what I want to do is I want to go live with other people and basically split that hundred dollars. So just get on live with me for like 15, 20 minutes, talk about life, crypto, investing, stocks, everything, you know. And after 15 minutes, once they send a notification saying that you're being paid, I will split the money with y'all. You know, as I'm all, I'm all about trying to help people grow. And then also with my following, it'll help grow your following. And next thing you know, you can help the next person the same way. So if anybody, you know, interested in Helping to grow the social media and or you know get paid to post stuff. Let me know and I can assist you. Okay, that's so oh, nice. I have that's a cool. Sorry. Huh? I have a question. Sorry, yeah. Melissa. Um, what if there's like a whole lot of volume and like no or low um, open interest with a with um a stock? So. You know, so you got to think, right, that that's basically saying a lot of people want to buy something or a lot of people used to have it. Now, a lot of people are selling it and nobody want to buy it back, you know. So if the open interest isn't there for people to for new buyers, the sellers are always going to win with the volume. Because I was looking at Torch and I'm just kind of confused, like um, it looks good, but the open interest was like zero for a couple of contracts. Yeah, and and when it's like that, you can't sell. Okay, all yeah, right. Yeah, you're stuck with it. So that 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 that's why that's important to look at the Greeks. That's really good as you did that because mm -hmm. say you go to you go to sell something, and nobody's interested in buying. You're stuck with that contract, you know. Right. So this is the type of thing where it's like say like somebody like me or somebody like in the group, when you do have some influence, you can say, you know what, let's buy this stock today. It opens up, and then you know we could kind of. Not manipulate the market, but open the market up to us, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we're all going to buy the stock. Because, like, even now, you can buy the stock on Weeble. You could have bought right. the stock at 4 in the morning on Weeble and made money still. It was $5 mm -hmm. with $8. So you still could have made, you know? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put it below this one because it's right on the 50-day EMA. And I'm going to put this, like, right here. So 55.71. I like, I like to use EMAs. Is, is my confirmation on top of the candles also. So I got three plays in here now that we marked up. The market opens in three minutes. So I'm just going to put this, the three that I marked up live with y'all now and then add some stuff also. Okay. Just so, and, um, so you have the information. TRWD has been doing really well. And it's to the list also. How do you see if they're doing pretty well? Huh? I said, how do you see if they're doing pretty well? Oh, the charts. I mean, right after this bull flag, that look, I leave no, everything marked up. I'm talking about like before you even like look at the charts. Oh, just just the history of, of the market. That's what I'm saying. You want to have a list of stocks that you watch every single day. So you know if something is doing good without even having to go to it. Because I know, look, this is a cup of handed right away. So I knew it was going to do well. This is, look, I started doing this, marking this up 20, 29th of April. This is when the history is taking place. Mm -hmm. So oh, okay. I know from history of me looking at the stock, I already know it's doing good. So let me go back and see how it's doing now. Same thing with Facebook, same thing with certain ones that I've already marked up. I just know to go look at it, and I know it's been doing good in the past. So this is a cup of handle. We know cup of handle is bullish. Yeah. So, you know, and it's gapped up on the EMAs. So it's like certain things that just let you know that, it, you know, it's already doing good. This is all. This is also one of the ones I was like, I paid somebody. I was like, the first person to get this right, I'm gonna see some cash up, and nobody got it. And I was like, it's marked up. It's, it's showing you. Mm -hmm. You should start quizzing like that more often. Oh, I, oh, I will. I mean, I, I want it to be fun in this world. I want people to make money. Making money should be fun. It shouldn't be stressed out. Like you know, I lose money some days. I make money some days. But at the end of the day, you gotta enjoy it. We only live once. Yep, that's right. That is right. So this cup and handle. So, yeah, so this is high. If it's right here, 
this area. See, the market just open. It's open right here. So it's going sideways. So we just got to see how the market does for this mm -hmm. candle. Go down to like. So the, the, anything four hours and up is usually for swing trades. I like to look at swing trades personally for myself, you know, but there's nothing wrong with looking at the Iowa chart, you know, and get information. But I would have looked at right here, this area, this resistance. And once it closed above the resistance, I would have jumped in. You know, so it's like learning how to look at the look at the charts. So I would have seen right here, this area, boom. And then I said, you know, let me jump in. So hopefully, right, wishful thinking as it's doing it, hopefully this forms a candle this way and we get a flag and then it starts to go up. We just wanted to stay above the EMAs. That's all. Okay. I know Melissa post F I want to check FSR. I know she posted FSR target. Let's see how FSR is doing. So it's right now. So it's consolidating to the side. It just touched the body, it just touched the 200, I mean the 20 day moving average, right? So this is my old entries right here, calls them for my puts. So it, it kind of touched the first entry, even though that wick is piercing. Uh, to me, it's not worth it as far as a couple of cents, you know, for it to be 10 cent, 13 cent, you know, for me to jump in. I wanted to, the body to close below this, but it has touched the entry for the put. Let me see her entry for the, yeah, her entry was 1925. Just, I mean, the market's already down now. So, oh no, the market, it was 16, uh, yeah. So her entry's right here around 16, 67, which is close to here. I said probably, it's probably on these wicks, 67, yeah, around this area. I put mine to the bottom this week. So, you know, you put a, typically you want to be on top of here. So you move mine up a little bit, tighten it up out here. That's the put, but yeah, it's, uh, Still around this area as far as uh, the entry for the call. So it's, it hasn't really moved. It's going sideways. Like the target, that's not much put out. The target has been consolidating for a while now on top of the 20 day moving average. All right, it's already marked up. So I always like to leave my stuff marked up. So when I come to a play, I can see it right away. Now, before it started consolidating, Target was on a continuation of uptrend after a double bottom. So like I said, bro, like I, I, I don't know if it's doing good or nothing like that, but I leave my stuff marked up. So when I do go to my chart, I see if, you know, right away, all the information. Do you see the flag? Yeah, so you see how you see how I was about to go mark it up, but I didn't have to because everything's already, you know, everything's already there for me. Oh, yeah, I, well, right now I see it consolidating and it's fighting this level of support and resistance right here. Mm -hmm. That support can resistance, and then it's in between right here. So it's trying to break out the channel. But usually, you know, when it consolidates for a while, I mean, it's going to take off. Yeah. So, uh, NVIDIA. See, NVIDIA is one of the ones I wanted to mark up this morning, but you know, it's hard to kind of like mark it up and explain it in the morning. And, you know, but I want to show you how to do it at, at the same time. But on Wednesdays, we're going to do it. I have actually chart class. So NVIDIA, uh, it looks like this formula, like I said, it looks just like, what's the target? I look like it's about to touch the EMA and form the flag. So, you know, but look, when it has that strong resistance like that, that's what you want. You want to see that on a chart because you know, mm -hmm. okay, it's struggling to get past this area. What want to finally do is going to go up. It's struggling to get past this area. What I finally do is going to go up a lot. So, this area is lower price, $715. And then it went to the peak of $774. So, you could have made a $30, you know, uh, type profit, which in options, well, we pay even more than that. What was $714? So yeah, $717 to $770. Yeah. So, you would have made like a $60, $50 profit, you know, that would have been about $5,000 on one option. 
if you would have gotten at this resistance level. So that's the type of stuff you want to, you know, see when you first look at your chart. Strong resistance. Who when it finally breaks out that uh that level of consolidating for so long, it's gonna be really bullish and you know make a lot of money off that. Mm. Kwame, what time are you gonna do your chart class on Wednesday? Oh, everything, every class is gonna be at eight o'clock. Everything's gonna be also recorded. Now, some stuff can't be public. You know, so it's going to be private. So you're going to have to like follow the page, but everything is going to be on there also. Is okay. it eight o'clock in the morning or afternoon? Oh, afternoon. I don't even, well, I mean, I'm, I'm up at eight o'clock, but I know a lot of people are around the world and some people get up for work and stuff like that. So I'm trying to make it uh, available to everybody. And then tomorrow, I was able to get the recording for the, the funding class. So I'm going to play that tomorrow for y'all. I can't send it to everybody, uh, you know, just because of copyright stuff, but. I'll be able to play it tomorrow, the funding video for the uh, 75000 from uh, Navy Federal. We'll be able to have that class tomorrow. And then yeah. Wednesday, be chart analysis. And then Thursday, you know, we'll do some credit stuff. So, you know, like I said, I had the new uh, class schedule out. You know, we'll, we'll do beginner stuff on Mondays and uh, Mondays for uh, options and for crypto. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, Tuesdays, it would be funding, entrepreneurship type stuff. And then that could be, you know, anything, Toro. Airbnb, you know, you have a last business you want to get into, real estate, anything, you know, we'll, we'll go to those type of things. And then on Thursdays, we do business credit and personal credit improvement. So just to help people in all areas of their business. Yeah, I want to have LLCs. And I know a lot of people say, you know, I have an idea what you want to have with your LLC. You want to have LLCs because you can start establishing your business credit, you know, and also you can get business trade lines and stuff like that. So there's a lot of ways to monetize off your business business before you even have it and i tell people at the time you don't have to invest to make money you just have to learn how to invest to make money and teach people how to invest to make money you know right so everything that i'm teaching y'all is well well worth over 50 dollars you mean the one class alone is over 100 dollars, you know and everybody else is charging 400 dollars a month for the type of stuff that we're doing but i'm never going to go up in the price and i want to make sure i'm teaching out this stuff so y'all can help you know teach this stuff as well so when we do get people on payroll I'm gonna look for y'all first before I outsource to other experts, quote unquote. Right. Oh, I have a, I have a question on the LLC. Yeah. Um, once we get our business license and stuff, um, can we use that the funding to uh, fix our extra credit? So you got to think. So that's your you're doing everything to help your business, right? So do you know what a, what a balance transfer check is? Yeah. Uh -huh. So basically, you can get a Binance transfer check and write a check to yourself and or cash out and use that cash to help uh, pay your fix your credit. OK, you got to think if your credit card has twenty five thousand in it and they allow you to do a balance transfer check on it, you basically have twenty five thousand dollar loan with zero interest to yourself. Right. That's not like the people, though. Um, well, yeah, I mean, there was a ways to get stuff that you didn't have to include the PPP loan and or there's forgiveness with the PPP loan, but there's a lot of funding out there. You know, it's just a lot of stuff that, you know, people don't really tell people. Right. And also, for your, your new business, you, you can get grants also. You get a bunch of funding from grants. Oh, I didn't know that. You got to think, all these other businesses, everybody needs tax write-offs. Right. So this is their way of, you know, getting giving back, but making sure that they don't have to pay a million dollars in taxes. They have to give a million dollars away. Right. It makes sense. That's why. That's why Microsoft and Apple always give so many laptops and computers away every time you get to schools. So you gotta pay them taxes. Exactly. Like if, I, if I'm gonna lose a million dollars, I'd rather lose a million dollars on a yacht or a car or something I don't really want, but I'd rather buy something than lose just lose the money. Right. For me. Huh? Can we go? Can we check Walmart, please? Por favor. <laughs> Thanks. I was gonna ask about that next too. Nice. Oh, we thinking alike. <laughs> right, right. I, well, I entered last week. 
So you see right here, do you remember I was telling y'all? That's that death cross, that 50 and the 20, uh, you know, touching. So the resistance right here, the resistance was on a 50 day and a 20 day moving average. As it went below it, all it did was fall. So you're looking at this doji, right? Remember the doji reversal. So, you know, hopefully this doji, look at this, it touched all the way down here on our side, it's starting to recover. So maybe the buyers are starting to take over, but as of now, as you see, not, not, not a doji's red, you know, so it's still on the downtrend. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, it's, it's, Walmart isn't doing good at all. I'm not going to lie. Um, no. The last, no, no, no. last time they did good was the earnings. And even before the earnings, it was doing bad. I think it's actually gone up since I bought it. So that's good. Probably got in around here. I got in at one thirty-five. Oh yeah, so you up? Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. I'm up. Yeah. But that's good. Yeah, your entries was most important. It don't matter what you say. The chart could be downtrending. If you could have got in right here <laughs> at one thirty-four, and then you know be up, be at right here, you know, so. Yeah, as long mm -hmm. as you're still up, you know, you still make a profit. Yeah, I'm still up. So <laughs> but you see up here, right? All the yeah. strong resistance, like you know, didn't get anywhere, didn't get anywhere, boom, you drop below the EMAs, kept going down, drop below this EMA, kept going down. So this is why we mark it up the way you mark it up. This was the entry for the call option, right? And this was the entry for the put. You could have got in right here and made all of this money on the way down. Mm -hmm. right. every, level, every level of the put entry and kept falling. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always mark up one entry, then a target price. My target price usually has to do something with the EMAs. Once it falls below the EMAs, you already know it's going to continue to fall. Hey, Kwame. My brother yeah. want to ask a question. He's in the group. He's in the group, but. Hey, brother. Hey, what's hey. up? Hey, what you think about Sheba? Oh, you said Sheba? Yeah. So I think with everything going on with Shiva, right, uh, all these different platforms adding it, you know, I feel like it's going to be a doge in like three years. Now, it may take super long and a lot of people are going to be frustrated with it, but we've seen what doge did, right? Doge didn't happen overnight. It feels like it did, but now it's dropping like crazy, right? Right, right, right. Imagine, it, imagine it a year or two or three years, right? where I have a really big platform, right? I, I only have like 11,000 followers on, you know, on social media. So I mean, I, I'm not nobody, but imagine in two years, three years where we all have 20, 30, 40,000 followers and we can all tell them, hey, let's jump in that Shiba email right now. You know, this is the, the the ground level that we're working on. Yeah, the market would be bad. You know, Elon Musk is one person. If he say buy sheep, it goes crazy. So imagine if we could get a hundred of us in the Discord or a thousand of us in the Discord with a thousand people following us, that's a million people who we could tell, hey, we're gonna buy sheep at this price and jump out at this mm -hmm. price. That's what you want. You want you want to get to that point. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna blow up uh, with the year in the, in the year, maybe sooner. Yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm holding. Uh, I don't care if the market does bad, if it's going sideways. I learned from experience with certain certain apps. As far as uh, if I have my sheep in my my trust wallet and it's doing bad, I just won't look at that. I don't care if I don't got to close. If I don't have to look at that for a week, a month, a year, I'm going to close the app because when I finally take off, I'm not going to be like, damn, man, I had a million dollars coin and I sold. I should have held it. I don't want to have that you know, conversation. Right. Yeah, I'm on the same yeah. too. So are you holding Doge too? Uh, I was I was lucky enough to get a million Doge in, in December. So you holding? Uh, I, I cash them out. I cash them out at the top oh, okay. at 70. Just because I know from experience, whenever it's like a big event happening with well, stock or crypto, it usually does the opposite. On every single battery day for Tesla, it does bad. Every single earnings for Tesla, it does bad. Apple has a, an announcement about a new phone, it does bad. So I was like, oh, it's going to be on SNL? Everybody was like, it's going to the moon. I was like, nah, I know from experience, it always does bad. Every big, every big announcement has been the opposite so far. So do you think it's gonna go back up? Uh, 
You got to think. I mean, who, who do we have to talk about it now? Elon Musk is being sued by the SEC about it over and over. He don't. He's had to lose money about it. So I mean, it was only him and Mark Cuban really pushing Dogecoin. Mark Cuban just got scammed out of Titan Coin. So they're gonna be like, well, let me just take the Bitcoin. So we need we need an influencer, really. I mean, that that's who was pushing it. You know, before Elon Musk was talking about Dogecoin, it wasn't doing anything, honestly. Can we take a look at Spy? Yeah. Thank you. Hey, call me. Why are you pulling that up? I got a question for you about the TRCH with the dividends yeah. that they're paying out. Isn't like so in, in three days when they pay out the dividends, isn't every, uh, I mean, maybe I'm totally wrong, but the next morning, isn't everybody going to sell that stock or uh, typically for a dividend, you know, there's some people that, uh, I think it's called drip when you, uh, dividend reinvestment. So yep. some people, there's some people that just, uh, re up right away on their points. As far as when they get their dividend, they, they, uh, just get more, but it, like okay. I said, it, it's been so bullish right now. For the most part, I might just, you know, take profit. Like a lot of people got in at one dollar, two dollars, you know. So it's like instead of being greedy, let me cash out after the dividend, like you're saying. And then there's gonna be some people that hold so. But like I said, at the end of the day, the sellers will always win. If, the, if a bunch of people take profit, <laughs> I don't care how long you hold it, you're gonna lose money, you know? Yeah. But this is spy, right? So as you see, we already have spy marked up. This was the call entry, as you see, right? It fell below this EMA. But well, no, this was the put entry, actually. And this is the resistance at the top, support, right here. So I put this for the entry for the put as it hit the entry of the put. like, And I would say I always use the EMAs also as a confirmation. So you see it hit the EMA, the 20. This is the put entry. Boom, it fell. This is the 50-day moving average. Closed below it. Boom, it fell. Now this is the next level of support because I want it to stay above the 100-day. Now we don't definitely don't want it to hit the 200-day moving average. But this is what we're looking at. The support right here, you don't want it to close below the 100 day moving average or we continue to fall. The last positive thing we had, as you see here, we had a double bottom it went above the neckline and then it continued to go up. But it, ever since then, it had its resistance, had a small little breakout. It has a resistance right here. I just added just to, so you see it. The spy, but if spy has been, you know, if we're looking at the uh, four hour chart, the daily chart, yeah, it's feel like it's been going down. But if you got in, this is the resistance right here. So I'll just put it right here. But if you close, I mean, you zoom out the chart, it has been doing good for months. You know, this is the, this is the pandemic. You know, this has been doing really well. Right. My question is where we are right now, we're going to have to eventually fill those candles, right? Those candles are going to have to be filled. Those two candles that are to the left of our, the candle that we're on right now. Yeah. Which would indicate that it would have to eventually go up. Eventually, right? yes. Yeah. But, see, and, and that's the thing. Uh, so you see how this turned on our side also? That's the indication. So the last time I did this, it did this. So you, I just look at the history of the, the chart. Now, yes, eventually, yes, it's gonna it's gonna go back up. You know, another indication of this also that it's gonna go back up. The world is opening back up. All I think all restrictions in New York ends next month. You know, New York is the stock market, stock, the stock exchange. So you know, the world's opening back up. There's people doing more activities outside, spending more money into the economy, stuff like that. And then it's gonna eventually go back up. But as of now, it's just go. You know, it's a little uh little downtrend. You know, not much, but you know, just a little small window. Of downtrend, you know, it seems like a lot, but it's uh four four hundred fifteen dollars here, and four twenty four twenty four here. So it's not even like a big, you know, a big drop. That's okay. really nothing in the market, you know, ten dollar ten dollar window. That that's not much at all. Okay. But you all we do want to see is to close up above this uh the fifty day moving average, you know. So from where is that and now? That's the green one. That's the green line. Oh, so so all right. So I'll break it down right now. So the so you see what this is. So the red one is the twenty day. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay. <laughs> Gotta grab my pen. Okay, so the red is the 20 day. The yellow is the 50 day. Yellow, 50. The teal is the 100. And the dark okay. blue is the 200. Now, if you go all the way over here, it'll show you also which one is which. But 
just because it's this color now, if you double click on it, you can change it to the color you want. So you can always know which, which is which. Is it? Okay. So you never have to keep it how it is. You can always change the colors for yourself. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And it's just, I just, I'm so used to the regular colors that that's what I use. But as far as the entry points, I use my entry points as the rays instead of the, the point of resistance. You know, that's just a habit. But like I said, if to do one now that we're on live and going over it, I would do a horizontal ray. And I would say we need it above here. This is where the support is. So this is actually the entry for the put. Well, if it was up here, it already passed all the entries. So typically, you want it to close above the EMA for a strong uptrend. Uh, so I'm looking at the, around this area. You're looking for a good entry point. So for me to find an entry point for here, I'm looking all the way left to see what's going on on the chart here. You know, so the top of this week uh, is a good indication. The top of this week right here is the bottom support of here. And if I go all the way over, look over here. This is where the top of this that wick is, is the top of this candle. So I just use the history of the chart to find the new entry points. So you see here, what I'm looking at right here, this top of this wick is off the top of this body of this one. So I just use all that information, go sideways, go sideways. I use all that information to see where I want to enter uh, for my call option again. So let me mark it up also. I already have it on. Top of this wick, top of this body, about here. So I wanted to enter here, and then the EMAs would be the next entry points. I mean, a uh, target price. So this would be the entry point to get back into call for SPY, and then this would be from here to here is where you think it'd go to as far as target price. Then from this target price to this target price around the EMA, around here. So that's how you know. Okay, cool. If it gets there by this point, the next area of target prices should be is the EMA. Okay. And like I said, even in the chart class, this is how I'm going to break it down. But I want to get out this information every single day so I learn how to get this stuff. Right. So during the chart class, I'm going to show you how, how to set up the charts and, and, and what indicators that I use, how I go over stuff, how I look at the chart. But every single morning, all this stuff that we're talking about is going to be here as far as how to break down the chart and how to read the chart. And then also, everything will be recorded and put on YouTube. So all this information is going to be available to everybody. So if you don't make the chart class on Wednesday, Every single day, we basically do a chart class in the morning. And then I make my watches here, right? So say I'm on here. I'm looking at the, the plays that I have marked up. Everything is red. Look at micro strategies now 46%, right? This is, it moves with Bitcoin, right? So we're seeing this big red candle, right? Because Bitcoin is going down. So this was the call and entry. And this is the put entry. I always have everything marked up. Hit that first entry. Hit that first target price. Now it's at the level of support. You would have made sixty dollars on the way down. You would have made six thousand dollars on this put, on this put option. You would have made. And I leave everything marked up. So if we're going over a play, and I'm like, you know what, Bitcoin is going down. Let me look at this play. I already know exactly what to look for because I already have reference. everything marked up. I'm sorry. This was. This is what. This is how many contracts would that would have been? You just need one. Oh my God! Yeah, you would have just need you would have just needed one contract. Kwame. Yes. Can we please look at eBay? And also, uh, I finished my uh, my chart for kids books. And it really breaks all this stuff down really simple. I mean, I know it's safe for kids, but it's to break it down in the simplest mm -hmm. form, you know, so you can teach your kids how to do this stuff. I might even teach your kid this at 10, 7, 5. And by the time they're 18, you know, they working a job is cool. There's nothing wrong with 9 to 5 at all, you know. But if you give your kids the opportunity to make six figures before they leave the house, you know, and really set them up, you know, that's what I'm trying to do for everybody. As you see here, once again, the EMA 20 day moving average is a support. Once it breaks below, it, it closes down. You want, so right now it's at the level of the 500. 
I mean, the, the 50 for the support. You, you, you want it to close above, but if it closes below, it's going to continue to fall, and then you want it to stay above this area. But this is eBay. eBay got a good level of resistance right here. Strong resistance. Resistance uh -huh. at the top. It's currently right here. You will want it to close typically above here for entry. What I'm looking at for the entry is the bottom of this candle, the support right here, the top of this resistance for entry. So to get back into eBay, it would be above around this area. I would say above here. I'll just go to the top of this wick since he's been here before. I'll say above here. I'll look at that for entry. Okay. And the first target price would be the EMA. Was that 64.31? Yes. Okay. And it's already around the put area as far as for the day. So it's on this EMA, the 50 day moving average. What Sorry. what what time frame do you uh use for it when you wait for confirmation? Thirty minutes so, or one hour? So honestly, if you're doing a day trade, you want to do an hour and down, right? I typically right. don't look stuff for swing trades because I never want to do anything in a day. You know, okay. Day trades is really risky. Even if I'm even if I'm gonna do a day trade, I'm looking at the swing trade time frame so I can have enough time on the chart. So even if I sell it in the same day. I still want the biggest time frame for confirmation. So the day in a day in a four hour, it's a two big time frame uh, confirmation that I'm looking at. If I drop it down to the hour, right? You see, it's still exactly right we were trying to get to. Yeah. That would be the first entry point. I mean, the first target price. So, like I said, you can break it down to lower. I use the biggest time frames for confirmation. As you see here, reversal on the RSI, which is an indication that it's going to start going up. Say, see how the support is right, right here at the 200-day moving average? Yeah. And then it closed above and it started going back up. So this would be the next target price. And this right here, look, it, like, it literally works out, for, works out all the time. So you see right here, this is the support, the resistance, and this is where I say the target price should be at. Right, And this was a different time frame. So it's just basically looking at this stuff over and over and over, you start to get used to it. Get familiar with it. Right here, look, support. The 50-day average is support. Once it closes below the support, it falls down. So sometimes you don't even have to mark stuff up. You just see it. You just see it, yeah. Look, more we say, right, once to do the cross, it don't, it don't have to be the death cross, but once they cross, it always starts to go back down. Every single time it does that. Every EMA that crosses or? It's no, for some reason, every single time they cross because so over something that's the last 20 days, it should be doing better than it did the last 50 days. That's basically what it's saying. But if it's doing the same as it did the last 50 days, that means it's doing bad. So that's like saying for the last 20 days, you've been able to do 300, 300 uh, 15 minutes of abs, right? In the last 50 days, when you first started working out, you can only do five minutes. So over the, now you're only doing five minutes again, like you did when you first started. So of course your your your, your uh, cardio and everything is gonna start going down. So think of it like that. Like after, look, this is your twenty day, right? This is when you're you're, you're really getting in shape, right? Because when you first start, you're down here. When you first start working out, mm -hmm. as you get better, you start going up, right? So you can only do one minute of running before you start getting tired, and five minutes of running, then ten minutes of running, then twenty minutes of running. You know. But if you're mm -hmm. doing 20 minutes of running and you're getting so lazy now, you can only do it for 10 minutes now. And then it cross down to the one minute now. That thing like that, that's why I keep going down. The 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 high, the smaller that uh the moving average, the better it should be doing. So once it crosses, that means oh, something's wrong. You know, you're not performing at that same level no more. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. And Thank also you. too, look 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 what the uh look what it's showing you on the chart. Also, you know, it's giving you the numbers, right? It's telling me what price target prices. So say like you didn't even know how to read a chart, but you had this just sitting here, right? It's just sitting right there. I know, right, that the the twenty day moving average 
is $64.64. The next entry point would be $65.14. It's showing you on the chart. All this information is there for you. It's showing you right here. But I mean, you have to move this. I could have this sitting right here and I still will know, okay, the next entry point is this. The next target price is this. So like I said, the charts be all the information you need to be successful at this stuff. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Like I said, I didn't learn this stuff overnight. And I didn't learn this stuff last year. I learned all the stuff in February as far as the charts. And every, every single day I work on my charts to get better at the stuff. So that's why yes. I created a chart section so everybody can talk about charts. And anybody that really want to learn this stuff is going to be there to learn this stuff. I'm telling you, if you learn how to do this charts, chart classes usually go for like $2,500. You know, $500, $500 or, you know, it's for a whole week. I'm teaching you all this stuff for free. All you have to do is learn this stuff. <laughs> then, you know, now you know yeah. you go get classes. Like, I, I really can make money learning this stuff. I am really hooked with learning charts. Like, every day I go to YouTube, I, I look at the, at the at Discord and look at the, all the information that is there. Um, I try to watch the lives again. I, um... I just, any question I have, I just go to YouTube and like research a pattern or I'm just really hooked with uh, learning the charts. And that's what I found out that if I learned the charts, like, you know, I could do, I could do really good here. The charts are important. You know, it's, it's the foundation of what you're learning. It's the foundation of like, okay, you know what? I am getting this. Like, like, like all this stuff is risky, you know? Like this is a, this is a trick that I learned from somebody on YouTube, you know, and I don't remember where where I learned this at, but they were saying always put a fifty, right? You can't really actually get exact fifty line, so it's like fifty thirty three or something like that, fifty seventeen. So this is like a level of resistance, right? You want to keep in charge. They always say when it's crossing below the fifty, it's going down. Every time it goes below the 50, it starts to go down. And I was like, you wanna know what? They're right. And that's just like a little trick that I learned from somebody on YouTube that I don't even remember what page I was looking at or what video I was watching, but that was something real quick that I learned and seen. And then they're right. So just learning all this information, you know, processing it, you know, and just putting it out to everybody so everybody see it. And like I said, this is recorded. So, of course, you know, you can save this and watch it later and go over stuff. If anybody has any other stocks that they want to look at, I'm here to assist you and help you. Please, you know, let's let's build our chart knowledge. Let's, you know, ask questions in the chart session. I put a bunch of charts there last night that we were going to go, go over this morning. And, you know, I, I really want to help you all be successful at this stuff. So, like I said, if you learn how to... Uh, do charts, you can make about five hundred dollars a person in the class. Really good if you know how to build credit. Everybody know how important credit is. You can make a good amount of money on there. Somebody charged me a thousand dollars to fix my credit. You know, I pay them just so I could see if I knew what they knew. You know, I'm the type of person that would do that. I would pay to get the information, and then I realized well, everything they just showed me, told me, I know it already. You know, but it was worth the investment to to see. Especially uh, an evaluation of what I what I thought I knew to, to verify that I knew what I was talking about. And then once I did that, I put the information free in the Discord for everybody. So once somebody starts to need the dispute letters or, you know, they have to uh, get their get their collections off in five minutes, how can you do it? I know all this stuff now. Now somebody would tell you you need four rounds to, to get the collections off and to update your personal information and to get your dispute letters. That's all eyes. You can get all that stuff done. You go update your personal information in less than 10 minutes, and you can get collections off your uh, your report in less than 10 minutes. I know how to do this stuff now, but a business will charge somebody uh, $200, right, a month or something like that to do it for four, month, four rounds, because they always say that. But that's not accurate anymore, you know? Now that I know the information, I put all this stuff in the credit growth session. Y'all learn how to do it, y'all can get classes. Y'all can make money teaching stuff that y'all learn inside the Discord. So it's not just about investing. Investing is a, is a gateway to set yourself up for the rest of your life. So me learning about crypto and options was cool to make that money, 
But now I'm getting into road. I'm getting into Airbnb. I'm getting into different business ventures with different companies. Uh, I have enough following and stuff on my social media. Now I'm getting paid every time I post. And now I get paid a hundred dollars to go live for 15 minutes. So if anybody else want to grow their following and, you know, want to help with that stuff, I have no problem helping you help me. You know, we're all helping each other. So we can go live and talk for 15 minutes and just have a regular conversation. And then I'm going to get a notification saying, you know, you've met the requirement. You done made a hundred dollars and we split it. I don't care. I want to help everybody. So how many, how many uh, followers do you need to have to get paid? So I think it's 10,000 and up and then you get like a notification and you got to have a professional page a business page oh okay but anybody can have a business page you know you, you just switch to a business page and then you just uh start working on your followers and and really just the followers you just need to post just consistent uh content that's really it hey hey kwame can can we look at torch real quick yeah I had a question about it. I'm, I'm new to uh, to these charts, so I'm not really sure. I, 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 how long we uh, how long we need to be holding on the torch because it's doing real well today. Yeah, yeah. See, that's and that's how that's why I was even talking about it today. So you want to look at it around this area, right? So I'm gonna mark it up so you see. It. You want to look at the previous high on RSI before everybody started selling. So the RSI will let everybody know when everybody was selling and buying. So around this area. This is when everybody started selling. So we have a little more room for it to grow. But at the same time, if, like I said, you made a couple thousand, a couple hundred off it, you don't yeah. want to get greedy. So look, it broke out that channel easily, closed above here, boom, started taking off. Just like we said this morning, what would? This is this, 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 the day candle. So this is this, this from today. Yeah, thanks, bro. Like I said, yeah, like, like I said, any questions you have, charts, anything like that, we're going to have open dialogue in the chart section, have everybody grow their knowledge on the charts. Once y'all learn this oh, stuff, y'all really can make a lot of money teaching this stuff. You don't got to ask me twice about chart discussions. I'm going to be in there. Oh, no, it's, it's going to be good. I feel, like, I feel like it was something that was needed, <laughs> you know? Uh, like I said, like, we have the beginner section for uh, crypto. I might, I might have to do a option chat, beginner's option chat, and just to share knowledge and open questions. I, I don't want to have so many tabs in there, but I feel like the more people learn, the better people can earn money and just help them grow. So, you know, like I said, I have no problem, you know, helping people with the stuff. Yeah, can I agree. you look at ASO? Was it A-S-O-S? A-S-O. Oh, A-S-O. This thing ever pop up. So we've seen uh it's currently right now at let's see what 3904. The resistance is pretty right here. So it's above the resistance. The cross right here, as you see, once it crossed the 20 to 50, it started going down. It's closing above the 100 moving average and the 20. So you want it to typically, let me see, I'm bringing that to the 30. Break it down even more. It's just certain things you want to do on the chart to close above. So you see this candle right here is closed above uh, right here at the 100. So typically you want it to close, let's see how there's more. You want the candle to close above here for it to continue to go up. This uh, 100 day moving average. So if it close above this area, like around here, uh, it continue to, to uptrend. If it closes below, you want it to stay above the 50 day moving average or it's gonna continue to fall. And then you look at the R side also to see the last time it was this high, what happened as you see. The last time it was this high, it started to fall, as you see here. Okay. So it's just, you know, using all this information from the charts to see. But like I said, now it's not 100% guaranteed either. This is all high probability trading. 
when it comes to the charts. But for the most part, the charts really do help. So right here is a uh, Coinbase micro strategies Chipotle, which is one of my favorite plays. I do that. I Man, I can do Chipotle every single day. I make money. The Chipotle. So Chipotle is always an uptrend. You know, like it's about to be. Yeah, the Chipotle is always doing good. Double bottom right here, but I don't even have to, you know, mark up the chart. See it, boom, right here, right there, neckline right here. Once closed above, it went up. Like I said, after a while, you start to see the charts, you start to see everything. And my children's book, the way I explain this right, is a, is a son and a, no, 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 it's a niece and a nephew. They're talking, they're like, uh, uncle, uh, you have our initials on your chart. He's like, what are you talking about? One is Wendy, one is Mike. Wendy is like, yeah, because I can see my, my, my first initial on your chart. And he was like, what does that mean? He's like, oh, it means it's going to go up. And then Mike wait, said, wait. huh? Oh, no, no, go for it. No, and then Mike is like, yeah, so when is an M, what does it mean? It means it's going to go down. And then Mike gets sad. He's like, don't be sad. You know, when it's going down like that, it could be a triple bottom. So it's just explaining it in the simplest form. <laughs> Seriously. That's super cute. Are your books out <laughs> yeah. here? So when so, we so the, invited? The, the book, is, so it's not, well, it's technically is, is edited and is uh it'll be out. I'll probably put it out this weekend. You know, I just wanted to make sure I have, I have a parent section in the back too, where it explains stuff more in detail. You know, kids probably not gonna understand it. So I have a, the kid, it's a children's book that helps teach the parent. And then in the back is a guide for parents to help understand this stuff. So if their kids do have questions, they can go to the back of the book and get the answers. So I, I try to put all the information in one book. So I'm trying to get, I'm trying, I'm trying to get it on Amazon, published on Amazon. So once it's finished, I will let everybody know. But like I said, it's gonna be super simple to understand this stuff. Next you know, then you take that that uh, fifteen dollar book, and then you do a teach, and then you charge somebody one hundred fifty twenty dollars to give a class on charts per person. <laughs> hey, I don't care. Look, I want you to make some money. See the candle right here You're going up. <laughs> that was really cute. Chipotle, easy money, man. Every day. Ah, uh, Chipotle, that's my goal, Kwame. Chipotle is some easy money. That's my goal. Like the day yeah. I play this, I'm I'm gonna graduate. But now nah, it is expensive though. Right? I mean, that's the only. I know thing. that's why I'm gonna graduate yeah. from the chart section when I when I play. It's I'm gonna let you all know. Bro, who doing good? And on a watch list, you can just see the percentage. That's how you know. So look at this, Chipotle. I mean, bro, who been doing good for a while? How much is a, a call for uh or an option like a contract for Chipotle of average? Uh about fifteen, about fifteen hundred. <sighs> yeah. Like I said, it goes up twenty thirty dollars on the on average. So you know you make about two, three thousand dollars every time. And Roku would have been a good play. You see this all the way from back here, just straight up. So I was just looking at the market, see what the market gives you. NVIDIA is down 25% right now. So, you know, I, I look for stuff that's down that usually does really well for recovery, right? So look, boom, clear as day, right? Support right here, 20-day moving average, close below, it goes down. Support right here, 50-day moving average, close below, it goes down. Now we wait for the same thing here. If it closes below the 100-day moving average, continue to go down. This is the old entry for the call, right? And it recovered all the way here. So look, this was the call right here. This was the put. The put was on the EMA. So I use the EMAs a lot, you know, as indications other than the wicks and the candles. But as you see here, they was doing really well for the entry. Once it went below the EMA right here, it started to go down. Once it went below this EMA right here, it started to go down. So it's an indication of this is the next one. If it goes closes below here, it's going to continue to go down. It's going to enter the old entry point. So if you would have got here. Right, entered here, made a bunch of money, got greedy, kept it the whole time. You reach right here, you lose all your money because you got greedy. Mm. So you want to take profits. No wrong with taking profits. Mm -hmm. Also, I would take profit right here because I see this resistance. Right, it was going sideways and wasn't moving for you know for a little bit. So I would probably sell right here, but this would be a good indication of when to jump back in. 
right? So, because you see the resistance right here on the top, I would have said, you know what? I made some money. It's going to the side. It's resistance right here. Let me jump back in. If it closed but above this resistance, then I would have made this money on this big candle. So, it's just learn how to look at this stuff. That's all, y'all. Learn how to look at it. Once you get how to look at it, you make a lot of money from this stuff. But you want to look at the charts on one screen, and then the other screen, you would be looking at your, your app. So this is up while I'm looking at Robinhood. I'm not looking at Robinhood, the price going up and down. I'm watching my chart to see what I'm going to enter and sell a trade, not looking at the app. But the RSI is really low, so the video should be recovering. Uh, Disney just started kind of moving a little bit. But yeah, for the most part, a lot of stuff is moving sideways in the market. Chipotle is doing good. It's even going to be more since we've been speaking. Gush is a oil ETF. It's doing okay. I'm going to add Zoom to my list. My fact, I'm going to pull up Zoom now. But as you see here, right, once it touched the EMA, you wanted to close above. So it's giving you an indication that it's going to start going back up. This was the entry for the call option, as you see on the top here. It pierced it, but it didn't enter. This is the put entry. Close below the put entry. As it hit the put entry, it went down. You never want to just look for calls. You want to look for both. Once it cross here, like we say, every time it cross, it goes down. Clear indication is going to keep going down. And it tell you that that fast. You see it cross, boom, it's going down. You don't have to overthink it. You don't have to, you know, lose money trying to say, no, I know it's going to go back up. Just take the money that's giving you. Zoom is another one that usually does good. And it's crazy. Zoom is doing good re recently, but the words are opening up. So I'm not sure if you know, it's more working from Zoom or I'm not sure why or how. Zoom has just been killing it. See, this was the old entry for the call option. So if you jumped in, <laughs> when we first told you to jump in, you'd have made a bunch of money. Right. Then this is the entry for the call entry again. Bunch of money on the way up. So like I said, I leave my trust always marked up. Once it look, same thing again, support right here. Support is the 20 day moving average. Once it closes, closes below it, it starts to go down. This old entry point is now a support. So this is why I leave all my stuff marked up. Old supports become uh, new resistance. New resistance can be an old support. You know, it, it, it all works together. That's why I always tell people there's no point to wait to mark up a chart. Those support and resistance levels are going to be the same. The only thing different is going to be one candle. Or depending on the time frame you're on, there's going to be two or three candles. But, you know, for the most part, it's going to be the same. I'm sorry. I feel like I've been talking a lot this morning. I'm, <laughs> my bad. Nah, you doing what you're supposed to, bro. But y'all yeah, see it, though, right? Like, and like I said, like I never wanted to feel like I'm teaching y'all stuff. Like I just want to talk to y'all, show y'all how to break this stuff down in the simplest form. And like I said, like y'all learn this stuff, y'all really can make a lot of money teaching it, honestly. To the point where like, I can see a chart and I just see the resistance and the support and where it's going and EMA. They do it for me. I don't even have to mark it up no more. I mean, so Zoom's going to bounce off from that, right? Hopefully, you know, like I said, you see here right <laughs> here, it just it just turned over. So, uh, you know, I look at all this information when I look at the chart. So it just started turning over. But at the same time, like I said, the world's opening up more. So I'm not sure why Zoom would be doing, you know? Uh -huh. should, if anything, it should be doing. Time to go back to work. Maybe they'll still stay home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless we're here, it's a big breakout. But as you see, a lot of people start wearing masks, just going out regular. We haven't heard anything about no new uh, right. reports or nothing. So I'm not sure what would, you know, increase the Zoom activity. Uh, probably uh, in a month or two, when people start going to school and they say, you know what, they don't want to go to college or they don't want their kids to go to school in person. They want to only do it online. And then I think I, I can see Zoom doing well then at that time frame. Mm hmm yeah, people in the streets in New York wasn't wearing masks this weekend. Yeah, nobody wearing a mask no more. It was I, 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 when I said, it, is it a uh, Fourth of July? Is it over? I it was, think it was so. a report out saying like, yes, yeah, it's, it's gonna be over soon. And I, I get it. I mean, in Florida, nobody ever wore masks. In Texas, nobody ever wore masks. You know, a lot of a lot of places, nobody did. People didn't care. But I think what they got to worry about is that Delta variant that's supposed to be worse than you know. And the COVID nineteen was so. I, th I think that's what it is. People are so tired of it; they don't care no more. People just over mm -hmm. it. 
For real, I think people, people just over it. They don't even yeah, care. Yeah, they'll be over it until everybody <laughs> start dropping again. So yeah. But but even then, remember the the younger generation didn't care. They like they were like, well, it's the older people dying out. <laughs> like so, mm-hmm. they still would go to parties and clubs and you know hookah lounge and. Yeah, care. it's gonna be it's gonna be hard for them to try to stop it again. Again, stop after, the world. after everybody been on look, we all been on punishment <laughs> for a month, for a year. <laughs> everybody ready to go outside again. Nobody care. Yeah, everybody right. gonna be defiant. Okay. I'm, I'm out here in California, and, and and I mean people. They now starting to come outside without the, I mean, like go shopping in the malls without masks and everything. So it's a little different over here. People still masked yeah, up over here. But I know, I know, so I know Cali, Cali, New York is like two really big hot spots. But that's what I'm saying. Like, so like when, when I see New York said they were lifting their restrictions, I said, oh, yeah, it's about to be over. Because the, when it, when it, in New York, if you're flying to New York, you have to stay for two weeks. You used to, not, not no more. But te- I, well, I technically, probably, I mean, I ain't never did it before, but I go home and then I just leave. <laughs> yeah, I drive. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I fly to New York probably like two to three times out the month. And, um, up until about, I say like three months ago, they will, they will make, when you come off the plane, they, they have you fill out the form. You fill out but that it was form, voluntary. Yeah. Take yeah, your number. Voluntary. And, yeah. Yeah, they're looking at so many people now that are vaccinated, so they're not, you know, they're like, oh, it's not a real But that's so crazy, but all the vaccinated people still getting it. And so it's like, what do, I mean, because the, they ain't dying the from it. You know, the vaccinated people are not dying from it, so then it's like, okay, you get it, but you'll live. But then that now they say, but you gotta get it every year now too. Yeah. So it's I'm like okay. I'm straight too. <laughs> if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But I'm yeah. not about to be a test dummy. Everybody knows <laughs> medicine and all this stuff. It, it, it takes years for it to be right, you know. That part. And, and then think about it, they yeah. still don't have a cure for the cold. So it's like they don't have stuff for common stuff. How are they gonna have something so something so advanced so fast? And then Pfizer. And Moderna, they all said that their stuff was not, not accurate, and now they're all being sued. It's like, no, I, I can't risk it. Yeah. yeah, no, thank you. Well, you yeah. know, some some things they're not gonna find a cure for because it's a money making thing. So, but yeah, well, I mean, the hospital itself is a money, money. You know, that, that's what the hospital is for—is to make money. Mm-hmm. You know, they, mm-hmm. they're they're a billion dollar industry. You never heard of a doctor saying they become a billionaire from just being doing surgeries. And if this wouldn't have been a pandemic, if only a few hundred people, a few thousand people.